welcome to the lectures on fundamental of MIMO wireless communications. Uh, we have uh, in the last lecture looked at white sense stationarity, uncorrelated scattering and homogeneous channels. Uh, with this we carry forward and uh, discuss the single input multiple output channel, the multiple input uh, single output channel, multiple input multiple output channel and also the narrow band antenna array assumption. So, uh, we are going to discuss this, but uh, very shortly uh, I would like to uh, uh, explain one particular characteristics of the channels that what we are looking at. So, so I would like to just describe the propagation characteristics which we have been uh, discussing over the last uh, few lectures, it is uh, very very important. So, if we if we have a transmitter at this point and we have a receiver at this point, uh, we have been saying that uh, let there be an ellipse. and all paths that come from this ellipse are having the same delay, which gives rise to flat fading. This is what we have described. And uh, if there is an ellipse, so I will draw another arbitrary ellipse. That means, uh, representing all scatterers, which are in this particular ellipse, we would have paths coming like this which are having the delay of let us say tau 2, let us say let us take a very very simple example. Right. So, we have these conditions and when we are trying to draw the impulse response that is received, let us say uh, we have raised uh, launched an impulse at the transmitter. So, because of uh, these that means, uh, let us change the color because of this ones what do we get is after a certain duration in time uh, that is the delay corresponding to tau 1, uh, we are getting echoes, echoes which are very close to each other. So, this is the result of the first circle and if we look at the, the delays of tau 2 that means, if we proceed further and this total delay is tau 2. So, we are going to get echoes, which are all almost on top of each other at delay tau 2. Now, if we concentrate on either of these two, if we concentrate on either of these two, let us let us take this particular set. What we are going to have is there are n number of such multipaths coming in and they are coming from different directions. One could be from this direction, this direction, this direction and this direction. Uh, which would define the angular spread. And similarly, for this one also, they are coming from different directions that would define the angular spread for each of uh, these delays. So, that means, if, if we are able to expand the view here in the theta dimension, that means, we could say that uh, there are rays uh, which are coming in this direction, in this direction, this direction, this direction. And hence, uh, we are in other words, trying to describe h, that means the channel coefficient uh, as a function of delay, that means we already have tau 1 and tau 2 and also theta, that means the angle at tau 1 in this angle, in this angle, in this angle, in this angle, at tau 2 again this angle and of course, that is a function of time. right? So, this axis is the time axis. So, that gives us the delay axis, the time axis and the theta. So, this is what is actually happening in the system is what we should visualize and keep in our mind uh, when we are uh, referring to the channel conditions. And uh, we although this uh, these things are going on, of course, there are many more details also this one kind of abstraction. Uh, we would always use even further abstractions uh, without which uh, certain results, which are very, very fundamental and which are uh, quite insightful are not possible. So, please be careful uh, at every point of time, when we are moving ahead and making assumptions uh, with using these kind, kind of channels. And also, I would like to summarize that we will be using a slow fading, uh, we will be using a flat fading, unless otherwise specified. These are the two conditions uh, that we will be using and uh, we will also be considering uncorrelated channels 
this will of course describe most of the time we will consider uncorrelated. So, in the space dimension. So, when we are in the space dimension and we are going to also take care of correlated right. So, just uh, quickly before we uh, go ahead uh, here uh, in this particular picture uh, we said slow and fast flat and frequency selective in the space axis we have the rich and poor scattering. So, clearly a uh, rich scattering scenario is one where signals arrive from all directions and poor scattering is one where signals arrive over a narrow angle here signals arrive from all directions right. So, if we go by the discussion in the previous lecture we said a rich scattering results in smaller coherence distance a poor scattering results in larger coherence distance right. So, that means rich scattering environment would mean there is lot of reflections. So, that in the spatial dimension there is lot of reflectors around whereas, a poor scattering means the rays are coming only from a particular directions and there is not too many reflections around. So, poor scattering is a situation where the coherence distance is larger, rich scattering is the, is the situation where coherence distance is smaller. So, if we take uh, two antennas uh, uh, lambda by 2, we can assume that uh, the signals are uncorrelated. So, that is uh, how would we define a rich scattering environment and a poor scattering environment and that would uh, bring us to a, a kind of description in the time frequency and space dimension of the wireless channel with which we started quite some time back. So, now uh, we move forward and try to look at uh, the CMO channel. Uh, the CMO channel as the name says it is single input multiple output. single input multiple output that means, we are looking at a situation where the transmitter has only one antenna and the receiver has multiple antennas. So, this is the receiver. So, we are trying to characterize or write down how would the channel be or how would we write down the channel under uh, in this particular case. Uh, these, this is a typical situation which we are going to encounter in the studies. So, it is important that uh, we take a look at this and uh, the number of antennas here we would write as 1, 2 up to m r m r suffix indicating receiver number of antennas and uh, let us have h i of tau comma t. So, if we suppress the i it is h of tau comma t that means, the delay and time is the impulse response of the channel. So, that is the impulse response of the channel between the transmitter antenna and the ith receiver antenna. So, we will use this T x for transmitter R x for receiver. So, this is how it is given by and we can represent h tau comma t. So, of course, i is equal to 1 to up to m r we would write it as h 1 that means, the first link h 1 tau comma t h 2 tau comma t and so on up to h m r tau comma t h 1 tau comma t h 2 tau comma t dot 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 up to h m r tau comma t with a transpose. So, transpose of this vector. So, uh, at the outset uh, let me remind you that uh, we would use uh, linear algebra and most of the studies on MIMO communications are using results from linear algebra. So, one would require the basics of linear algebra vector operations and matrix operations uh, to be revised at uh, all points of time. So, when we say this <coughs> what we mean is that uh, effectively we are talking about a column. So, that means h 1 tau t 
H2, tau T and so on up to H M R tau T. Although we are writing it in this way as tau comma T, uh, most of the time we will be interested in uh, talking about H of T, because uh, we will assume flat fading. Flat fading would mean that all the multipaths are at the same point. That means, uh, in this particular picture, uh, in this particular picture, the red color is not present. That means, only the black is present. So, we do not have, uh, we do not have the, the, the red ones. So, that means, or to make it faster, we, we do not have this red one. So, only, only tau 1 is present. So, that means, all the delays these are not present, only, only the black paths are present. So, if you could imagine that, that is the flat fading, that is just for the reminder case, just for the reminder. So, only, only the black lines are present. So, only, only these, only these reflectors, no other paths. So, all, all the delays are the same, almost the same, no red paths only these paths. So, that is uh, when we have this. So, usually we would write uh, H, um, H of t is equal to H 1 of t, H 2 of t up to H m r of t. This is mostly what you would encounter transpose for the single input multiple output channel. And the received signal, so what we are going to get here is y 1, y 2, y 3, this is what we are going to receive. So, we could write that y i at the ith receiver as a function of time is equal to ideally speaking h i tau comma t convolved with s of t for i equals to 1 to up to m r, but what we have written over here you could write it as for flat fading scenario h i since it is no delay it is a multiplication s of t for i equals to 1, 2 up to m r. So, this is what we are going to get and for i equals 1 to m r, you could write it in vectorial form y of t is equal to y 1 of t, y 2 of t up to y m r of t transpose or we could write y of t is equal to h vector times s. So, that is what is in short form you could write s of t h of t. You could write this in the vectorial notation as the received signal. So, this clearly tells that I am receiving y 1, y 2 up to y m r. So, m r different copies of the same signal whatever is transmitted over here. That means, if s of t is transmitted, it is going to go through the channel receive over here, go through this channel receive over here, go through the channel receive over there. So, there are multiple copies of the same signal which is received at different antennas. So, this is the typical single input multiple output channel. Next, we move on to the multiple input single output. So, that means, the reverse of this condition, if we take this condition and from this becomes the transmitter, this becomes the receiver. So, that is the case. So, as if there is one transmit antenna and multiple transmit antennas. And there is only one receive antenna. So, this is the reverse condition. And now, uh, one example of this could be, uh, if this is the base station, base station is pretty large, it can hold multiple antennas this is the mobile which has only one antenna. So, this is the uplink direction and here this is the downlink direction that means, this is the base station with multiple antennas this is a receiver uh, with a single antenna. So, this could be a potential uh, situation that we could take it as an example. So, here we would mark them as the first antenna, the second antenna up to m t indicating the transmitter uh, antenna. And so, here there are m t number of CISO links, each of them are CISO. CISO means single input, single output. So, these are the different CISO links and here would identify each channel as H j of tau comma t. 
uh, which would be the channel impulse response between the jth transmit antenna and the receive antenna. So, that is the way to write it h of j tau comma t and uh, what we would have uh, h h of tau comma t the vector is h 1 tau comma t h 2 tau comma t up to h m t tau comma t no transpose anymore. So, this is basically a row vector whereas, for this case it was a column vector there is a transpose here that is the difference. And a again uh, if we consider flat fading which we will mostly do. So, in our case we, we can write it as h 1 of t h 2 of t up to h m t of t. So, this is the standard way of writing it and now there is a slight difference between the transmitted signal and the, the transmitted signal in this case. Uh, we will have s 1 of t transmitted from the first antenna, s 2 of t transmitted from the third antenna, s 3 of t transmitted from the uh, sorry s m t of t transmitted from the m t th antenna. So, uh, what we are going to get is s j of t getting convolved with h j of tau comma t by the jth link any any particular link this is the h j and then at the receiver this signal that is getting transmitted from the first antenna is getting added to the signal which comes through this path is getting added to the signal that comes through this path is getting added to the signal that gets that comes through that path. So, we have a summation of j equals to 1 to m t right and of course, there is some noise. Okay. So, this is the received signal y of t. So, if you look at the fundamental difference between uh, the h of uh, t there and sorry the, the y of t here and the y of t there. The difference is here uh, y of t consists of several y's that means, I have received 1, 2 up to m r number of copies. Here I have received only one y, but I have transmitted uh, m t number of copies. So, that is pretty natural and it goes by the name and here uh, each of this link would have a noise associated with that. Whereas, here uh, there is only a single noise added to the combined component simply because there is only one receive antenna. So, with this uh, if we move ahead and the next natural step for us would be to describe the MIMO case. So, that is the first time we are encountering MIMO multiple input multiple output. So, in this case naturally it is a combination of the previous two cases. So, what we have is uh, the H matrix now we write it in capital H this is usually the notation. Uh, so, so the way we have uh, come across is uh, we have uh, started from time frequency now to space and then we have taken Fourier transform of the channel in the delay axis in the time, time axis inverse Fourier transform from the Doppler axis then there was the space this angle there are so many things that are going on uh, you would often get confused with the number of variables that are required. So, in, in many a cases when you are not studying the space dimension that means when you are not studying the multiple antenna dimension uh, usually people uh, usually the, the habit or, or, or the technique is to represent capital H as the Fourier transform of small h and that means, uh, we are talking about the transfer function of the channel, uh, but when it is the spatial dimension the usual notation is to use the capital H, but there are many places where people would use a c they would use a g or they would use a small h. So, uh, we would go by this because uh, uh, we are taking a flat fading channel. So, that is not going to confuse us. So, this is the notation that we are going to follow. But as of now what I write here is not with flat fading this with uh, full uh, fading statistics. So, that means, h 1 1 right. So, here we describe that transmitter has m t number of antennas transmitter 
transmitter has empty number of antennas. Similarly, the receiver would also have MR number of antennas. So, this link would be H 1 1. This is received on antenna 1, transmitted by antenna 1. The second antenna link, if I draw the second antenna, that is for sake of convenience. So, this link, if you look at it, goes to the second antenna 1, 2, H of received in antenna number 2, transmitted from antenna number 1. Similarly, this particular one is H received in antenna number M R, this is M R transmitted from antenna number 1, whereas this link is denoted as H which is received in antenna number 1 transmitted from antenna number 2 and this link is H received in antenna number M R transmitted from antenna number M T. So, this is how uh, the typical uh, link description would happen. So, here H 1 1 means this particular link, it is tau comma t, I can simply write H t and then H 1 comma 2 which would mean received in antenna 1 transmitted from antenna 2 of t and so on up to uh, received in antenna number 1 transmitted from antenna number M t function of time. Just a quick reminder at this point, these, these, these we have taken them flat padding. So, they fluctuate in time, it is a time axis they would fluctuate, right. And if you take the Fourier transform of this, you are going to get the Doppler spectrum or sorry, if you are going to take the autocorrelation and take the Fourier transform of that, you are going to get the Doppler spectrum, whatever you have studied would apply for these cases. So, here we have H of 2 comma 1, that means received in antenna 2 transmitted from antenna 1 and dot 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 up to h m r comma 1 of t, this would be h 2 2 and so on. Here we are going to get h m r m t as a function of time. So, this is how the full model would be. So, I would like to go back a little bit when I say the multiple input single output uh, in this case. So, the vectorial notation uh, we could write it as y of t is equal to h of t times s of t, where s of t is uh, given by s of t is given by s 1 of t, s 2 of t up to s m t of t and the transpose. So, that would help us in describing uh, the equations. So, this is the uh, vectorial equation and uh, that means, we have this row vector, we have the column vector. So, we have a single scalar as the output in this case. Now, we move ahead here. So, S of t since we have multiple antennas, S of t would be defined as in this case, where we have multiple input, S of t is defined in this way. So, we, we for every channel, the link the output is this one, every receiver antenna the output is this one and there will be m r number of receiver antennas. So, that, that way the expansion has to happen. Uh, so, we could write that s j of t is the transmitted signal from the jth transmit antenna and y i of t is the signal received in the ith receive antenna i equals to 1 to up to m r j equals to 1 to up to m t. So, y of i is equal to sum over h j of t times s j of t, right. Uh, of course, h i j sum of j equals to 1 to m t is the received signal. Uh, if you would represent in terms of tau, then of course, there a convolution sign has to happen. That means, if you would say h i j tau comma t, then there is a convolved with s j of t. And uh, in vectorial notation, this could be written as y of t vector, because 1 y i equals to 1 2 up to m r 
is equal to H. I put a double unders underline to indicate it is a matrix. I put a single underline to indicate it is a vector. So, y is a vector because y 1, y 2 up to m r is equal to h times s of t. So, this is a function of time, this is a function of time. So, if you look at the matrix notation, it is a matrix, this is a vector and this is a vector. The size of this is m r cross 1, the size of this is m r cross m t, size of this is m t cross 1 and of course, there is noise and noise is naturally m r cross 1, because there are m r number of received links. So, that means, this one is y 1, y 2, y 3 up to m r and each received link, each signal that is received here is a combination of the transmitted signal from all the transmit antennas. Uh, the m r th received signal is also a combination of the signal that is received from all the transmit antennas. So, with this way uh, you could represent the received signal uh, when transmitted from multiple input, multiple output system and this combination, this particular final expression that we are writing over here is giving us the expression to take care of all situations of whether we have uh, CMO case, a MISO case or a MIMO case. In case of CMO, if, if you are having a CMO case, in this case single input multiple output that means m t is equal to 1, m r is equal to of course, m r. In case of MISO system, you have m t equals to m t and m r equals to 1 in case of MIMO system, you have m t equals to naturally m t and m r equals to m r. So, that means, you have this uh, this particular uh, matrix at hand, which is uh, useful. Whereas, in other cases, uh, just these numbers would help with this. So, if we take one particular example, let us say CMO, m t equals to 1. That means, uh, this is only 1 that is transmitted, whereas m r equals to m r. So, we get all these values. If we take a MISO system, that means uh, m t equals to m t, that means this is a row vector, uh, this is a column vector. So, this gets multiplied becomes 1, m r equals to 1. So, this is 1 cross 1. So, we have a scalar. So, this particular expression or this particular structure takes care of all the three combinations that we have. And our study of the MIMO communication system would be based on uh, this particular model that we have just written down. Thank you.